so what exactly happened in scripture before the Lord passed by Moses in the cleft of the rock? Let's read some more from Exodus 34. It says, Then Moses said, Now show me your glory. And the Lord said, I will cause my goodness to pass before you, and I will proclaim my name, the Lord, in your own presence. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. But, he said, you cannot see my face, for no one may see me and live. And the Lord said, there is a place near me where you may stand on a rock. There is a place near me where you can stand on a rock. But when my glory passes by, I will put you in the cleft of a rock and cover you with my hand until I pass by. And then I will remove my hand and you will see my back, but my face may not be seen. So he says he's going to let him stand on a rock that is near him. Who is that rock? You know who he is. He's Jesus. God gave us a rock to stand on and it's right up next to him. Moses found God in the quiet of his own heart here in this passage and God spoke to him and then God showed Moses more of himself. And what do you think was the natural outflow of seeing God? It was repentance. Here in the scripture, in Exodus 34, right after Moses sees the back of God, hears him talking to his heart, Moses says this. This is a stiff-necked people. Lord, forgive our wickedness and our sin and take us as your own inheritance. And the Lord said, I am making a covenant with you before all your people I'm going to do wonders never done before in any nation in all the world. And the people you live among are going to see how awesome the work is that I, the Lord, am going to do for you. I've been reading another beautifully anointed book this week, and some of the words blessed me so much. Here's a thought from the book I was reading. See what you think of it. The only trustworthy preparation for the times that lie ahead of us are those preparations which are for the heart, not the body. If you love the Lord, then this is where all preparation must begin. If your heart is not right with the Lord, all your preparation for the times ahead will be in vain. Hmm. Upon hearing from my good friend Laura Heck on Wednesday afternoon, her mother had passed away to glory unexpectedly that very morning, she exclaimed to me, how could one prepare for a day like the one I've just had? There is no way to prepare, she said, except to know Christ. Hmm. I'll just repeat what she said. How could anybody prepare for a day like I've just had? There is no way to prepare except to know Christ. profound and full of her testimony of God's help through a time of times in her own life. Down below, Laura, you'll find a testimony of Laura's day that day written by her, and I know you'll be blessed to read that this morning. You'll be so blessed. God was surely with her. She was not alone because she had Christ with her and other people he brought alongside of her, which is a precious glory to the Lord. In the book of Revelation, John proclaims, And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. That's in Revelation 21, 2. The holy city John is talking about here is Zion, and it is made up of the overcoming spiritual children of God. These people are seated with God in heavenly places. They spend much time alone with their Lord, seeking His face, 
and every time they emerge from their secret closet of prayer, they are, as John says, coming down from God out of heaven, where they've spent time with him. Their hearts are always wherever the Lord is. The holy city that John is talking about here is Zion. The scripture refers to Zion as God's holy elect, his people. And Zion is made up of overcoming spiritual children of God. These people are seated with God in heavenly places. They spend time alone with their Lord, seeking his face. And every time they emerge from their secret closet of prayer, they are just like John says, coming down from God out of heaven, where they've spent time with him. Isn't that sweet? We're talking about finding God in our secret place, in our hearts and repenting. And this, this is a further encouragement to you that you'll be like Zion coming down from God out of heaven. Every time you meet with him and talk to him and repent for things in front of his face. The book went on to say their hearts are always wherever the Lord is. They have eyes for no one but Jesus. He has a magnetic pull on their hearts that draws them into his presence. Uh, and every morning, these people get up thinking, Lord, thank you for my family. Thank you for my job and all the good things you've provided for me. But I know that nothing of this earth is going to last. And my heart isn't here. My heart is with you, Jesus. Just in closing here, the overcoming bride of Christ is not preparing to save her own skin right now. The overcoming bride of Christ is adorning herself, readying herself, purifying herself by faith. Like those scriptures and revelations we had a few weeks ago, they said, but you are poor, you're blind, you're naked, buy from me gold refined in the fire buy white clothes to wear, right? The overcoming bride of Christ, the church at this time, is adorning herself, readying herself, and purifying herself by faith, not by preparations for earthly things, but by faith in God. And she is setting her heart in order and allowing that heart to be drawn to her beloved. I hope you find that the message is touching your spirit today. Uh, the Lord loves you so much. I find that my own spirit drifts away from the message of repentance and then has to be brought back by the Spirit of God and it drifts away and it has to be brought back again by God and He's so merciful. He brings me back and then I get that refreshing all over again. And that's the place he wants us to live in, in these confusing times for most of the world. We don't have to live in a confusion or fear, but we get to be refreshed and refreshing to others by staying in his presence and continuing to seek out that quiet place where he meets us and laying it all before him and letting him talk to us. We love you. We miss you. We believe the time is coming closer to when we'll get to be together again. And we pray you hear God's voice deep in those places in your heart. Speaking to you, guiding you, comforting you, directing you. Because even your leadership at the church can't show you what God himself can show you and lead you into. So pay close attention to his words to you. Thank you, everybody. Have a beautiful week this week.